First Kings 20. And let's pick up 32. At the end of the battle, the Ben-Hadad has fled. His servants say, well, let's go in the manner of the Jews that are nice people. And let's go and say, hey, we don't want to die. Protect us. So they girded Sirkarf on their loins and put ropes on their heads and came to the king of Israel, Ahab, and said, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. <laughs> well, who, who wants to die? And he said, Is he yet alive? <laughs> he had no idea he was still alive. It was just a great massacre of Syrians. Ben-Hadad has taken off. He's in the city, in the inner part of the city. He is my brother. No relationship at all. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him. And did hastily catch it. And what is it? They said, thy brother, ben Hadad mentioned that last night. And they said, go ye, bring him. And ben Hadad came forth to him. He caused him to come up into the chariot. Hey, come on in my chariot. And ben Hadad said unto him, the cities which my father took from thy father, I will restore. I'm going to give them back to you. And thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus. And as my, and as my father made in Samaria. So you're going to make, name, make these streets and call them by our, each other's names. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant to the enemy. So he made a covenant with him. Agreement. A pack. God made a covenant with Israel and sent him away. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets. So here's a group of prophets of the Lord. Here's one of his sons. And sent unto his neighbor, in the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, smite me, I pray thee. God said, smite me. That'd be like me on the street. Me Say, somebody come up and hit me. In the name of God, hit me. And the man refused to smite him. All right, I don't want to hit you. I don't want to cause any contentions. I don't want to cause any problems. Then said he, the prophet, unto him, because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord. Ooh. Behold, as soon as thou depart from me, a lion shall slay thee. <laughs> And as soon as he departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Just because he wouldn't hit him. You see, that's, ra that's radical. That's God said, don't eat that fruit. And look at the troubles that fruit has done. It's rebellion. God said it. Do it. Then he found another man and said, smite me, I pray thee. Now, notice he doesn't say, thus say the Lord this time. And the man smote him. So that in smiting, he wounded him. Well, not only did he hit him, he caused injury. So the prophet departed. He got what he wanted from the Lord. And waited for the king by the way. So he goes to the place where he knows the king is going to pass. And disguised himself with ashes upon his face. Now, it's not like we read before. What he's doing, he's disfigured his face. And he's making himself look like he's been in a battle, which he doesn't look like he was. He's pretending. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king and said, Thy servant, this is a prophet, went out into the midst of the battle. I don't know. I don't know if he did or not. We just know he shows up and he smite me. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, keep this man. All right. Here's a man. Keep this man. You're in charge of him. He's a prisoner of war. If by any means he be missing, when I come back and I, when I finish my business and I come and I want that man I just gave you, if he is missing. Then shall thy life be for his life. I'm going to kill you. That person that was handed over was to die. And if he doesn't die, he got away, it's going to be your life. 
That's why the Philippian jailer grabbed that sword in Acts 16, when he realized the fact is that maybe every prisoner or one person has taken off. Roman law was if a prison is if a a jailkeeper, if anybody gets out of that prison and runs away, not only is that jailer going to die, but it's also recorded that the family too. So he grabs that sword thinking everybody's gone. I'm dead. This is the same case here. That happened when Paul got let out by the angel. Yeah, and Peter and all them. Herod had the whole jail crew killed. So what we see here is, all right, I have been put in responsibility of somebody, whether I liked it or not, I'm in charge. Or else, or else, thou shalt pay a talent of silver. That's a lot of money. So it's either your life or a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy, that's the only time the word busy shows up in the Bible. I was doing things. I was distracted. Here and there. He was gone. Where'd he go? He's gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Hey, you said, either your life or you owe a talent. That's all your own mouth, buddy. You're guilty. You said, keep the man, and you turn around and say, well, I lost the man. So shall thy judgment be. Either you owe the silver or your life. Thyself has decided it. That's the only time decided shows up in the Bible. Listen, man, you you hung your own self with your mouth. So, there it is. This guy shows up, and he's speaking to the king. He says, hey, I had in charge of somebody, and I lost him. Where did he go? I'm trying to find something here. I couldn't remember where it was. So, and the Bible, no, that's not the one I want. When we read later on with Elisha, and we read about Naaman who is cured of his leprosy, and Naaman goes to Elijah, he says, listen, I'll give you anything money anything you want it's yours Elijah says no there's a time to get there's a time not to get you just go home and Elijah's servant runs up after Naaman and says lies to him he says well we had two men and in second kings 522 and he said all is well my master has sent me saying that's a lie behold even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim a lie two young men the sons of the prophets Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garment. Now, that's the only other place, two places that this talent of silver is to be spoken about. Here, it's it's for a man's life. One man. If I let him go, I got to pay a talent of silver. The other place with Elijah's servant, it's two people, a talent, a, half a talent for each. For their needs, for their well-being. And the king says, listen, you've opened up your mouth to your own destruction. You either got to die or you got to pay the town. What are you bothering me for? Now the king's thinking, hey, I'm the king. I can pardon anybody. Because he's already melted his guilt. Yeah. He's already admitted his guilt. And a pardon can only be given by someone who's guilty. So what the king is saying is this guy has come up, he has confessed his wrong, his sin, his he is guilty. So he's coming to me, he wants a pardon. And the king's reaction is, I ain't giving you a pardon, you're guilty, plain and simple. And the prophet, he hasted and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophet. So he covers his face. 
So King Ahab would not know who he is. Once King Ahab has spoken, cleans his face up, and oh, okay, you're one of the sons of the prophets. But we read off, it said in verse 35, a certain man of the sons of the prophets, and Ahab says, you're one of the prophets. He said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Now when this guy says, Thus saith the Lord, that dead man by the lion would be, You better listen. I didn't listen. Because thou hast let go out of thy hand. Now remember he said, Someone was given to me in charge, I let him go. So the illustration of this man and the, the illustrated story he has is really Ahab. And it would be involved with Ben Hadab. God put Ben Hadab, now I can't mention his name, Ben Hadab in Ahab's hand. Ahab should have killed him. Instead of saying, Come into my, tr my chariot, my brother. Because watch what God has to say. Let go out of thy hand a man. That would be Ben Hadad, whom I, God, appointed to utter destruction. God wanted Ben Hadad dead. He wanted him dead by the hands of Ahab. Ahab failed. Therefore, thy life shall go for his life. That's one of the things that the, that the prophet said. And thy people for his people. Oh, now Israel's involved. The leader of the nation who did not obey God has now put a curse upon the people that are under him. And the king of Israel went to his house heavy, heavy, and displeased and came to Samaria. And what an end to the chapter. But this. We're looking at history again. And may we take our Bibles to history, 1 Samuel 15, 1. This happened before again. First Samuel 15, 1. Samuel, who was a prophet, also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. That's a king. We got a prophet and a king. Ahab has had, I think, three, four prophets in the chapter we're studying. First Kings 20. Be king over his people. That's how we close the chapter. The people. Over Israel. Now it's one unity right now under King Saul. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Or the lion will get you. And the New Testament says the lion that goes out and roareth is Satan. Satan got a hold of Ahab. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek. And the story we read today, ben Hadad, Did to Israel. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite and eliminate, and utterly destroy all that he have. Spare them not, but slay both man and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Saul so gathered the people together and numbered them in Telam, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. We had a number of how many men were in battle in 1 Kings 20. See how the stories are matching... Now, God did not tell Ahab to utterly destroy, blah, 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 blah. But you don't make alliance with people who are against God. God told Ahab, he thinks that I'm the God of the hills only, not the God of the valleys. Well, I'm going to kick his butt. I'm going to get him from saying that. And then Ahab turns around and says, you're my brother. Come into my chariot. We'll have friends. We'll be lovey-dovey together. We'll have peace. We'll sing Coca-Cola songs together. 
Now, I don't know what Ahab knew. I didn't know what was going on in Israel, but it evidently does not look like that Israel's teaching Bible history of what they have. Now, listen, they don't have the major prophets. Elijah is still living. There is no Isaiah. There is no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Hebrews, John, James, Revelation. No. They've got a quarter of the Bible that we have today. In verse 5, the Saul came to the city of Emlech and laid wait in the valley. Remember the children of Israel and the children of Syria? They, they stood there for seven days and they came closer, closer, closer. Kaboom. And Saul said in the Kenites, Moses' father-in-law's family, Go depart, get you down from among the Amalekites. At least I destroy you with them. All right, proper. You have nothing to do with the Amalekites. And he showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Okay, that's good. Saul smoked the Amalekites. Israel smoked the Syrians. From Havla unto thou comest to Shur. That's over against Egypt. He took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Didn't we see that word in 1 Kings 20? Why is it we read two passages in two nights from the history of Israel and our current events in 1 Kings 20? Why have we read a story in Joshua and now we're reading a story in 1 Samuel 15 and the words completely match? And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Is that not what happened to Syrians? And what, they didn't get killed? They ran into the city and God dropped the wall on them. But saw the people spared Agag. Ben-Hadad ran off and hid. But he's still alive. And the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, then they destroyed utterly. Okay, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel. Here's his prophet. Smite me. <laughs> I gotta go talk to the king. I ain't gonna smite you. Smite me. Okay, ow, that hurt. I can go talk to the king. It repenteth me that I had set Saul up to be king. What do you think God's saying about Ahab after he's making enemies in covenant? For he turned back from following me, Ahab, Israel, and has not perform my commandments it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night and when Samuel rose up early to meet Saul in the morning it was told Samuel saying Saul came to Carmel oh, oh, oh well didn't we just have a Carmel in Ahab's life and behold he set him up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gildal Gal. Samuel came to Saul and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What me is this beating, bleating, the cows the sheep, of the sheep in my ears, and the lowering of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Half of disobedience. So, we come down to verse 22. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obey the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected thee from being king. Ahab. Verse 32. Then said Samuel, Bring hither to me Agag, king of the Amalekites. Come here, Ben Hadad. And, and Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said, Surely the business of death is past. Spare my life. Now, 
The servants of men hate that Israel is so kind, Israel is so sweet. You remember the book of Joshua? They overpassed the book of Samuel with what Samuel is going to do. Now watch what Samuel does. And Samuel said, As thy sword has made women childless, Ben Hadad, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Ahab has let Ben Hadad, bye, see you, brother. See you in a little while. We're friends. At least Samuel destroyed the enemy of God. Now Ahab. History is repeating itself. It's going to repeat itself. And men, one thing, do not learn from history. Now, whether Ahab has not ever heard, whether Ahab has forgotten, God has not. you got two kings of Israel who disobeyed God. And it ended their kingdom. And it brought death. The wages of sin is death. And that's written to Christians.